Welcome one and all to the Storybox podcast, the place to be if you are a lover of stories. My name is Jay Phantom, former real estate agent now, living my purpose, sharing amazing stories from people all over the world. I'm grateful that you're here today. Now let's journey into the Storybox together and hear more about whose story will be unboxed today. Well, everybody, welcome back to Storybox podcast today. My friends, I am delighted to welcome a multi-platinum pop star. Many of you will be familiar with, her name is Ali Brooke. Now, if for those of you that are living under a rock and don't know who Ali Brooke is, Ali just created or released her debut memoir, Finding Your Harmony. And that gives a little bit of a, a hint of where Ali is from. Uh, Ali is an American singer. She is the former member of the group, girl group Fifth Harmony. Uh, she broke free of the group and began to establish herself in her own career in 2017 as a solo artist. She featured on uh, Lost Kings, Look At Us Now, with rapper ASAP Fergie. Uh, Ferg, if um, you guys know who that is. She also released the single Perfect, which is one of my all-time favorite songs. I just have to say that. Uh, right now <laughs> with DJ Topic in January of 2018. You've been in my ears for such a long time and also in the ears of many other people. Ali, it's an absolute pleasure and delight to welcome you to the Storybox podcast today. Oh, thank you so much. That was such a, a sweet intro. It made me feel so nice. So thank you. And I'm honored that Perfect is one of your favorite records. How cool. I, I always loved that song and the message of it. So I'm happy that you did too. Thank you. It's, it's a powerful song. I just have to say that. And speaking about powerful music, we were just speaking about one of our favorite artists before Frank Sinatra. <laughs> so we um, already, we have already connected on, on such a deep level. Uh, just yes, to begin uh, with. He's, <laughs> um, he's in my, uh, for those who can't see, he, he's in my uh, TV screen behind me right now. So that's, why that's how we connected on that I love listening to Frank all the time he's one of my biggest heroes in life and it just so happens it's yours he's yours too it's so cool it's what a small is- world it really is <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ali, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this before we dive into your backstory and how you got started doing all this amazing stuff I have one question that I love asking all my guests which is what does success look like to you mm, oh my gosh it's funny because I had a certain picture of it in my mind when I was 12 years old, you know, in pursuit of a dream and then acting on the other side. It's so different. Um, but for me, what success is, is being able to live out my true calling, the desires in my heart, the dreams in my heart. And I'm so thankful that after a lot of what I've been through, a lot of pain and heartache and rejection, and a lot of huge obstacles in my way. I'm finally at a place now in my life where I'm living my fullest life in, in my dreams. Um, being able to sing a song from my heart, to be a part of programs that um, I love, you know, everything from children's programs to um, creating some of my music videos from, from uh, my mind that I've always envisioned to collaborating with different artists. Obviously, before COVID hit the world, I was traveling the world, performing my songs, um, and just doing so much in my in my heart. Um, that's what being successful means mm-hmm. to me. It's not really about numbers or um, or money or fame. It's really about living out your calling and, and what's in your heart. Um, that's what that means to me. Oh, I absolutely love that. When was the moment for you, Ali, that you sort of realized that this was success for you? Was it a gradual thing over time that you sort of started realizing? Or was there a catalyst moment somewhere in your life that sort of sort of woke you up to it and said, that, that's it? Um, do you mean like when did I find success or when did I start shaping it in my mind? When, when did you start shaping success in your mind? Was it after a catalyst moment or has it sort of been like over time? Um, I would say when I was young, I had like a pretty big picture. Um, I, you know, knew that I always wanted to be, 
you know, singing my heart out and, and sing all over the world and be in front of people and make them feel something powerful that all my favorite artists made me feel. And then over time, I think it's more so the journey to that was a lot different than what I thought as I kind of uh, mentioned, you know, in my book. Um, but the first time that I really kind of got the first taste of success was on X Factor and in Fifth Harmony. And it looked a lot different than what I thought. But then uh, after a lot of situations and a lot of years of being in a girl group and being on my own, mm. it, it changed um, as far as kind of just getting to the root of what success is. And it's, it's again, like living your, your dreams and your passions and being happy and being empowered by people you work with and people who you also collaborate with along the way. And, mm. um, being able to try, you know, a lot of different things too, trial and error and have fun and, uh, you know, be silly and be free and, and know when to be serious and, um, and in control. Um, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but yeah, <laughs> I didn't mean to jump. It completely does. Um, and I'm, I can't wait to actually dive into your book in a moment, but I'm curious about, how you grew up, like what were some of the things, the lessons that you learned? Who did you want to be when you grew up? You mentioned that you wanted to be singing your heart out on yes. being in front of people. Where did that come from? Well, um, growing up, so I grew up in a city called San Antonio in Texas. And we're so, my family and I are super tight knit. We're this Mexican American family. I have my parents and my older brother. And then besides them, I have all my cousins and, you know, my aunts and uncles and we're really loud and fun and um rambunctious and um full of life and energy and a lot of love to give so that really rooted me at such a young age and um growing up in a city that also celebrates our Mexican American heritage was so important because it gave me that sense of um of dreaming big and knowing that it was possible. And we celebrated so much of our culture and so many different artists. But one of the artists that shined the brightest for me was a singer called Selena. Yeah. And she, uh, she was just such a phenomenal human being and, and talent. And, um, you know, me watching her videos at a young age, watching her movie, non-stop um, since I was a little girl singing and dancing to her music that's what really shaped me and influenced me and seeing someone who looked like me who was Mexican-American who was from Texas all these things made me believe that hey I could maybe I could go out there and and achieve my dreams too so that was so super important um, having that in my family um, was so rooted in faith as well. And all those things combined really allowed me to, to be who I wanted to be. And I had the most amazing parents to always support and encourage my dreams. And, as, and my brother too, my brother always encouraged me, but also my parents encouraged him as well to go after what his heart wanted. So that was imperative. And I'm so thankful for my childhood and my family. You know, that's something that will always be so close to me. You know, we're, we're unbreakable. I love that. Um, what was one of the biggest lessons that your mother or father taught you growing up that you hold dear to your heart to this day? Mm. Not being afraid to be, I know this sounds, you know, you hear it all the time, but it really rung true to me is to be myself. Um, at a young age, I struggled a lot with insecurity and feeling like I belong. Um, and my, you know, uh, I talk about it in my book, there was one moment where I went to Hollywood at a young age with my parents, 12 years old, and I was so excited. I had, you know, rose colored glasses, kind of thinking, oh my gosh, everybody is fun there and, and kind and loving, just like, you know, my family or just like people are in my hometown. And Oh, once I go to LA, that means you're it. You, you kind of just make it. <laughs> I have this very naive. <laughs> um, and then I, I went to LA and that wasn't the case. People, you know, at the time weren't very nice. It was very competitive. 
I was really one of the only Mexican American young girls. I didn't look like everybody else. And, you know, everybody had, they were in movies and film and they had all these friends and I only had my mom. And at a young age, you know, that bubble kind of being popped was really hard, you know, on, on me and my confidence. And um, there was a moment where it all got to be too much for me where I had uh, my mom and I were in our little tiny apartment and struggling to kind of make it. And I just broke down and I said, mom, you know, I'll never be like these girls. I'll never be cool enough or, or pretty enough or good enough. And I'll never be enough. And I just started crying and my mom cried with me and she, she cried. Uh, we cried, we both cried. Um, we cried to sleep. Um, if that makes sense, you know, where we, yeah. we just, we just cried until we fell asleep. Um, but my mom said, you know, mama, one day you're going to see, you know, you're beautiful the way you are. Don't change, please. And, and you are more than enough mama. And one day you'll look back on this. And the next morning I wrote my very first song called be you, which was like a little love letter to myself, to be myself, to not change, to not wear a mask in front of everyone, to just be who I am. So having that ring true to me to this day and my parents always saying, mama, you're, you're enough. You are of such value and you don't have to change. I didn't know how much I'd need that even at the height of success. So that never left me. I can relate to you, your story a little bit because recently, like I went through a very similar journey of discovering who I was as a human being, as a man, as all these identity shifts, because I grew up a certain way. I went through a lot of different painful experiences uh, that sort of shaped who I was up until that point. And uh, 20, I had, last year, actually, I went through a very difficult breakup. I lost my dog of 11 years. And, yeah, it was, um, and then also I was abused by my boss verbally and, and oh emotionally. Mm, I know that feeling. Well, yeah, it was not a good time, like, time or place for me to be in. And I'm so sorry. Oh. It's completely okay, Ali, because you know what? It made me it made me realize that yes, I went through all that, mm. but it made me who I am today. If I didn't go through, through all that, I wouldn't be able to relate to you today and your story and I wouldn't be able to get to that place and say, mm -hmm. look, you are, every single one of you that is listening to this, you need to know right now that yeah. you are and forever will be enough. Don't worry about what your best friend or anybody else says. Yep. Yep. You are created with a unique mm -hmm. purpose. You are special. And when I say that, it's not just it's not just me saying it. It is real. It is true. So you need to start believing in it. And that old saying, Ali, like if you what you put in, what you say to yourself, you will start believing. And oftentimes we tell ourselves all the time, and this is what I did, that you're no good. You never amount to anything. That's easy. Trust me. It is so much better when you replace that with you are enough and it's not it's not a lie it is yep. true it's so start believing it now oh my gosh you are absolutely right and that just man that hit home for me um on so many ways um and it's so true so many people need to hear that message especially now you know a lot of people are left with their own thoughts and, and feeling isolated and alone and um a lot of the times we can just be so awful to ourselves and we can believe those lies. And if, if I were to just encompass anything, you know, my purpose of not just my book, but my music and, and just talking to people and just being an entertainer is mm. to share that same message, that same sentiment of you are enough, you are special, um, is for people to really believe that. So that's beautiful. And thank you for or using your platform to share that because again, so many people need that message. So many people are struggling and, and all these things. So yes, thank you. 
if I can share just a little bit of my story in the hopes that it might help somebody, then I will, because I'm not afraid to get vulnerable. I'm not afraid to share things with people that I've been through and has hurt me in some way in the past, but now I'm so much better because I went through it, because I made the choice to say, look, I, I can either choose a defeatist mentality where I can continue allowing all the negative to destroy my being and ruin my soul and create my own, create this false identity of who I really am. Or I can choose to accept that that happened to me in the past and I can yeah. be persistent in moving yeah. forward in all the good, all the positive things in my life that are going to help others. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for your story, Ali. All the things that you've been through, I'm sure, have shaped you in becoming the, the amazing human being you are today. Mm -hmm. Music is such a powerful medium and it really speaks to your soul. And mm -hmm. is there one song for you that you've, you've sung that has just like made you or connected with you in, in such a way that sort of like helped you overcome trauma, overcome pain. That's just taking you to another level. My own music or like another artist song can be another artist can be your own music, whoever it is. Oh my gosh. There are so many songs. I mean, gosh, people like Frank. <laughs> I mm -hmm. love Frank so much. He's helped me. Um, Artists like Dolly Parton and Celine Dion. Yes. Um, man, they've helped me get through so much. Um, there's a song that reminds me of my my grandpa who's no longer here called Because You Loved Me by Celine Dion. Uh, that song just makes me so emotional and it's beautiful. It's really a beautiful song. Um, gosh, I love Whitney Houston. Um the I love the greatest love of all by her. That one is so powerful. Um, gosh, there's so many songs. It's so hard to choose. Um, What's the song that you're most proud of that you've either sung, written, and shared with the world? Oh, perfect is definitely one of them because of its message. Um, the message of self love and accepting yourself. Um, I struggled a lot with insecurity and with accepting who I was and, and everything about me and being able to put out that song um, and have it resonate with so many people was so wonderful and, and very special. A lot of my fans felt the same way. You know, they struggled with having an identity or fitting in and that song made them feel enough and made them feel perfect. It's called perfect. Um, and I love that song. I'm so proud. There's also a song that I released um, this year called Fabulous. And it's super fun and positive and uplifting. And in the verse, it kind of narrates my journey again and in a similar way of just saying that, you know, in my past, I put my heart in someone else's hands. Let everybody tell me who I am. But now I understand that if I'm going to love someone, I'm just going to love myself. I know that I'm fabulous. I don't need anybody else or no one else. Um, and that's super fun and empowering. And to get to that place where I actually mean those lyrics is a pretty significant moment for me and passing that on to my fans and making them feel fabulous and valued and loved and enough and confident was awesome. So I love that. And also a song called higher. Yes. It's it's um, that I did with Matoma. It, it shares again, in a way my journey and it says my love's taken me higher. And I thank everyone who's prayed for me you gave me my wings. I mean, all the people in my life who've prayed for me, who have encouraged me, who've loved me, lifted me up, they've gotten to me, they've gotten me to a place in my life where I feel like it's it's only up, but uh, up from here and a place of feeling like I'm I'm free and I'm liberated and 
And that's the most beautiful feeling. Um, so I thank my fans and all the people who've loved on me in th- these past few years who've really taken me higher. I absolutely love that. I really do. And if you haven't listened to any of Ali's songs, go and listen to them now. Even Perfect. My goodness. <laughs> perfect is such an amazing song. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> it, it really is. Like, like we were talking about before, the deep meaning that it has. And yes. especially with music, like it connects with your soul. That's what we're yeah. talking about. So if it's got a, such a powerful meaning behind it, go mm-hmm. and listen to it. Like if you are struggling with knowing who you are, this song mm-hmm. is going to help you a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Ali, I want to ask you, uh, joining X Factor and, and joining uh, the, the girl band Fifth Harmony, how did that, what's the story behind that? How did that all happen? It was so crazy. So basically, um, I'm trying to make long story short. <laughs> I can like ramble on, but I'm trying to do my best. Okay. So, <laughs> I love started- rambles. <laughs> okay, cool. I started singing at nine years old because of my third grade elementary school teacher. And then from nine to 12, I performed all around my, my city, everywhere, you know, festivals, barbecues, restaurants, and wherever I could. And then at 12 years old, um, I went back and forth to Los Angeles with my parents to pursue a a singing career, pursue a record deal. My parents had such tremendous belief in me and they have their own story. And while they were supporting me, they were also trying to, to, to deal with the financial aspect and strain of supporting, you know, a a daughter in her career. And my mom, she had health problems. She had severe scoliosis and was trying to manage that and just get through each day with her, with her, horrible, horrible pain. Um, and so for many years, I was out there recording with everyone I could, performing everywhere um, in pursuit of, again, a record deal. Um, funnily enough, I did so much in that time and I met so many amazing people. I eventually worked with some massive songwriters and producers, but I didn't really get my big break until I was 18 years old on X Factor. And my mom encouraged me to audition. And I was super scared. I was like, no, mom. Nope, I'm not going to go through a reality TV show because I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid to fail in front of people. I'm afraid to mess up or to get a rejection. I'm fine with where I am. But really, I knew the truth of I was at a crossroads. You know, I was getting older and I was about to graduate high school. My mom's health was getting worse. My dad couldn't really afford anymore to go back and forth to LA to pursue, to, to help. So we were kind of all at a standstill. We never were going to give up ever, but it was definitely a a struggling time of being like, what's next Lord, you know? Um, and so after a lot of (laughs) conversations and a lot of convincing, my mom finally convinced me and I submitted my audition online. And once I did, I, I remember I was so frustrated. I, kept recording it over and over again. And then I just said this prayer and I said, you know what? God, I don't want to do this. I don't. So please close the door by all means. But then I was like, if it's your will, then, then you, then open the door. You know, I, I trust you and you know, what's best for me. And then I hit send and then bam, six days later, I got an email saying you made it to the live auditions in Austin, Texas in front of all the judges and, and you made it. And I, my mind was blown. And again, there's so much detail that I'm missing because I'm trying to tell the short version, but you know, from 12 years old to 18, so much, you know, uh, work and sacrifices being made to again, get discovered. And then at 18, when I got my big break, it was like, whoa, even though I didn't want to do this, I wanted to do it (laughs) when I got that email. And then it changed my life. I went on X Factor and I got eliminated as a solo artist. Thought my dreams were over, completely devastated. They caught all my tears on camera, of course. (laughs) And then they called me back and they formed me in a girl group called Fifth Harmony. And the rest is history. It's pretty insane how it all happened. <laughs> wow. One thing that I do want to ask you out of all of that is you mentioned God. Now I'm, I'm personally a Christian. I'm a man of faith. That's amazing. Well. I'm a Christian. 
you never know. You know, I always want to be respectful and careful, but also own who I am too. And exactly. Not be a That's awesome. Wow. I'm ashamed. I love that. And yes. Is that a Bible on your coffee table? I'm it sure. is. This is from a, a friend of mine. It has my name on it. Wow. And yeah, it's, it's so cool. I actually was given this this year and I never had my own personalized Bible like this. So it was really, really touching. Um, his name's Ryan Reese. He's a, he's a pastor and I was just like blown away. So yeah. <laughs> amazing. Do you have a life verse that you, you use or? Yes. So uh, I, I share this in my book too, for, for those who, um, there we go. <laughs> but, yes, but uh, one of my favorite verses of all time is let your light shine before men. So that way they may see your, your good uh, glorify that. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm missing a film earth. So that way. <laughs> wait, let your light shine, shine, shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify, glorify. the Father that's in heaven. I think. Um, there you go. That too. <laughs> Ironically, I just messed up my favorite verse. It's okay. Well, <laughs> I messed up mine too. Don't worry. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Thanks for the save. But also, um, uh, also for, I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future. There are countless amount of times where I needed that verse and I needed that reminder of God, you know, do I have hope? I don't have hope right now. You know, am I going to ever have a future? He does have it for you. I, I can just tell you, anybody out there who needs to hear this, even though it may feel like hope is lost, no, it's 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 around. You just have to hold on tight and believe. Um, and and I'm telling you, miracles can happen. And that's why I wrote this book, and I have it in my hands <laughs> because it's my testimony of, gosh, how with faith you can move mountains and. Um, our God can move mountains and, um, and miracles can happen. And, and even when there are so many doors shut in your face and people are mean and people are evil and they try to try to take your life from you. If you just hold on tight, you really can achieve greater heights than you can have ever dreamt of or imagine. Um, but yeah, those are my favorite verses. And I say this in my book too, but I've always wanted to be a light in this business and in this dark world. So that's why the first one is one of my favorite verses. I love that. And the hope part and the faith part, there's a story that I heard growing up, which is so powerful. Like faith can move mountains, literally it can. And it reminds me of the story of a little girl. She was in an orphanage. She didn't have, she was an orphan. Mm -hmm. And she lived by a mountain. It was actually a, an active volcano. And uh, one day the volcano was actually going to erupt and they had to evacuate the village. But two nights before the evacuation, this little girl uh, goes to a window, opens it up, and she has a perfect view of the, the volcano. And this is the, the part that I love the most, the faith, the grain of a mustard seed. She prays a simple prayer and she closes the window. She believed that God would move the mountain, literally move the entire mountain. And she wakes up the next morning and the mountain oh. is no longer there. It oh my God. Some, some kind of natural uh, event happened overnight. I think there was oh. an earthquake and they were able that to is- actually stay there. When I heard that story, Ali, it gave me, it sends chills down my spine. It still does yes. to this day. Oh, my gosh. That's, that, is the, that is what leaves me awe-inspired. It's stuff like that. It really happens. And sometimes when you grow up going to church and stuff, you are you can sometimes get desensitized to that stuff and, and say, like, yes, you know, yeah, I believe, yep. But really, do you believe? That's a real question. And God will... God will test you and God will surprise you and amaze you. And stories like that just, again, give me chills all over. And it's just so, gosh, it's a testament to who God is and what he can do and what faith can do, even a little mustard seed. Uh, that's, that is phenomenal. 
I promise we will get to your book in a moment because um, no, it's okay. we're, 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 we're already here. We're, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> but one, oh my gosh. one uh, other story that I, I thought I would share about the faith aspect because I believe it is so important and being unashamed of being a Christian and, and how God has worked not only in your life, Ali, but also in mine. Uh, I was two years old and I ended up getting some amount of food poisoning and <gasps> I was also born with kidney reflux and scar tissue on my right kidney and I had been vomiting and severe diarrhea. Sorry to paint the bad picture, but no, I was so sweet. dehydrated in my little body that I was so close to actually dying. The doctors actually said that I was an hour away from having kidney failure and, and the whole bit. They couldn't find a vein in my entire body to put in a, 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 a cannula, a IV drip, yeah, to hydrate my body. And this is the faith aspect. So my mum goes to my, my pastor at the time and all these people and I didn't know it, but there were people all over the place, all over Sydney, Australia, that were bending the knee and praying for little oh. old Jay in the hospital bed, making sure that he would survive and, and that he would, mm -hmm. he, he would live. And the doctors ended up looking about 30 minutes after they, they were praying for me and they had checked my entire body. There was not one vein at all, but yet they were able to find a tiny, tiny vein about the grain of a mustard seed <laughs> in, in between my, my toe. And that was, that was faith in action. So if you don't believe that faith and prayer and God is real, I am a living testament that yes. he's real. Yes. Amen to that. Wow. That's just, that is incredible. Oh my gosh. Praise the Lord. You know, it's so crazy. We are so similar because I had a similar situation. Um, so when I was born, I was born a premature baby. So I was born, yeah, at 20 six or seven weeks. Um, and I was so tiny that I fit into my parents' hand and, and the doctor kind of came and they were very worried and very concerned about me. And unfortunately, premature babies don't have a high survival rate, which is so terrible. So they were praying and, and pretty soon the whole world or, you know, a, a lot of the world was praying for me and I made it through and the doctor said, oh, she's going to have all these disabilities and, and problems growing up, but I don't have one. Praise God. Maybe just sensitive hearing, but if that's it, <laughs> take it. <laughs> it's just like the, the power of prayer, really. And um, my parents never forgot that. That's so crazy, you know, that we both are kind of walking yes. miracles. We are. Is that in your book? It is, you yes. Know? It's in the, I think, second chapter or third. Yeah, you go into all the detail there, but that's kind of the shortened version. I love that. So what encouraged you to actually write this book, find, Finding Your Harmony? Where did the title come from? Well, you know what? It's so funny because I was at Disney World with my family <laughs> back in 2017, and I, um, Fifth Harmony, so we were performing there for this Christmas um, special. And my parents came and my little cousins and we made a family trip out of it. Um, it was so magical. And, you know, I was working on my book at this time and I was like, hmm, a title, a title. And I'll never forget, I'm like, Harmony, Harmony, wait, finding my Harmony, I found it in the middle of Disney World. It, it just came to me and, you know, cause obviously being in with Harmony, <coughs> It's kind of a nod there, but also harmony in music, harmony in, in who you are and, and in your spirit and um, harmony in, in your life and uh, the harmony of music. You know, it all just has such a huge significance to me in my life. So that's where the title came from, Disney World. <laughs> Disney World, where all great ideas come from. <laughs> Inspiration, right? Like it's, it's a magical place, uh, I've heard. I've never been there, but I need to go. Yeah. You have to go. Oh, my gosh. It really is so magical and so much fun. It's my favorite place on Earth, one of them for sure, besides, you know, my family and, and home. Oh, it wow. is awesome. 
So one day you're going to go and you have to tell me how it is. <laughs> I will. I will. I'll make sure I do that. <laughs> um, yes. Ali, I'm curious about, okay, is this in the book? Is it like you describing or sharing why you decided to leave Fifth Harmony and go on your own to shoot? And, and yeah. Yes. So what happened was, it's kind of funny, but I was the last on board with with Harmony kind of moving on. So, um, you know, the rest of the girls felt like, you know, it was time to move on. And I was like, no, you know, we have so much left to do. There's so many more, you know, dreams for us in my heart. And, you know, but there was a lot of factors and it was a lot harder to kind of make our own music and to carry forward than we had thought. And um, I had to respect the group decision, you know, that that everybody wanted to move on, you know, and I, I had to, to accept that and move on. So once I got past, you know, feeling sad and disappointed, I actually had this, oh, one of the most amazing feelings in the entire world, which was, oh my gosh, my solo dreams are about to come true. I'm about to be the solo artist that I've, that I've wanted to be since I was a young child, since going back and forth to LA with my parents and, and all of their hard work and sacrifice is like, it's about to come true. My life is about to begin. And once that sunk in, just uh, the most magnificent feeling in the entire world was, was erupting. And um, little did I know what, what light ahead. Absolutely. And I mean, look at your career trajectory after you left the group you got your I, I would assume it's best-selling is it a best-selling book now oh book? I hope so we can say that let's just we'll, say, we'll it. say it we'll say it we're confident <laughs> that it is <laughs> I love it Amazon and stuff so yeah why not <laughs> well I'm saying that it's going to be a best-selling book because I believe in it I believe Thank in you Ali and your talent uh, everything that you're doing is bringing a lot of inspiration, a lot of light into mm -hmm. people's lives. So kudos mm -hmm. to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. I have a couple more questions for you, Ali, if you don't mind. Um, this one is more of a fun one. Uh, okay. What is the weirdest food combination you've ever tried? Oh, that's a good one. Dang. What is, I don't know if it's weird, but like it's not, up my alley. I'm not very adventurous. No pun intended. <laughs> I'm not very adventurous when it comes to food. So one time I tried, it was, I think like fried octopus with, um, some like, I think it was like peanut butter or something at this fancy Ooh. restaurant. And I was like, I'm not going to like it, but my friends around me were like, no, try it. I'm like, I don't like, you know, octopus and, and seafood like that. That doesn't seem like I would like it. Um, but then I tried it and it was so good. I would totally have it again. Um, so my lesson there is to just try things because you don't know if you're going to like them or not. <laughs> I love what about it. you? What was a strange combination? For me, um, I have many, many strange combinations of food. Trust me. I, I'm not that adventurous, but I will sort of try one food that I love with another food that I also love. Um, Okay. So the other day I was actually eating, I have this weird combination that I, that I concoct every morning. It's like this fitness yogurt with peanut butter and I mm. mix that together, which is mm. like the staple. Yeah. And then the other day I had that all mixed together and I was eating um, a, like a lolly, like a uh, candy. And um, yeah, like, you know, the natural, con you know, those like little jelly babies and, and all that sort of stuff. I don't know if you've oh, yeah. seen jelly that. Beans? Yeah, jelly beans. Yeah. Um, so I had a mouthful of that. Okay. And I couldn't wait to finish it so I could eat my yogurt. So I decided to eat everything together <laughs> and didn't think, didn't think that it would work. But strangely, yeah. I created this new flavor, like this candy. Yeah. Uh, peanut butter yogurt sort of flavor and it yeah. worked it, it really awesome. worked um, <laughs> I so have to try, I, one try of these. it 
Yeah, hundred percent. You got to try it. Maybe when you come down under, then uh, then you, you can down under, yes. go. <laughs> so I've been to Australia. I think what twice. I never went on my own, but I went in Fifth Harmony, and it's an awesome place. I miss it. It is really beautiful. You can say that Sydney is your favorite state. <laughs> I, I do love Sydney so much. Is that where the well, yeah, Sydney Harbour, right? Sydney Harbour, the Opera yep. House, the Bridge, and some of the best food places. Oh, food is my my love language. So anytime I get a <laughs> food, that's the best part of traveling, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, when you come down under, I'll make sure to treat you and your family to some of the best places here that I know, I know the owners of, and I can vouch for them. So, <laughs> I would love that. Count me in. That is so sweet of you. Thank you so much. I cannot wait for that day. I totally miss traveling abroad and uh, definitely miss Australia. So I can't I gonna, wait. I was going to travel day. this year myself um, um, because believe it or not, I've never been on a plane. And yes, it's probably shocking, but... <laughs> You've never been on a plane? No, I'm 24 and I've never been on a plane. So I cannot believe that. Well, you know what? You have a similar story to Carrie Underwood. She didn't get on a plane until her idol audition. So you're not alone in being like a little older and not being on a plane. That is crazy. Hold on. That okay. Awesome. That is an awesome fact. <laughs> yes. We need to document this. Whenever you go and travel, you have to just show everybody and let me know what you think. What um what is the first place you're going to travel to? Do you know yet? Well, I have a lot of friends of mine in the States and I have a new friend of mine in New Alley yeah. in, the, in the States in LA. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of places that I do want to go to, but Miami is one of my one of my spots because I'm a huge Miami Heat fan. Like basketball. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I love Miami. Hmm. There's That's a lot of fun cool. Miami stories in my book. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, my second last question for you, I want to be mindful of your time, but if people were to, I say, get this book and they open it up to a, a page, what page would you recommend they open up that would, I guess, give them the most information, give them the most challenge, that sort of thing, if that makes sense? Oh, my gosh. There are so many lessons in this book, um, everything from overcoming insecurity to, to holding on to your faith, to how faith can move literally mountains and can change your life. So it's so hard to just narrow down to one. But one of my favorite stories is the story of um, when my uncle was diagnosed with throat cancer mm -hmm. and it was the first diagnosis in our family and <clears throat> as you can imagine how devastated we were and and shocked and just in agony and we were cold you know it, it was such a horrible time for us and I was balancing traveling and and you know being on the road and stuff and it was awful but we had to pray and we had to believe that he would he would get healed and it was a long time. It was months and months and months, but it was amazing. Just the power of prayer, because I get chills just telling this is that the doctors had told him that, you know, Hey, you're going to have to do a major surgery. We're going to have to you know, cut your esophagus and, and perform a major surgery, but there are no guarantees, unfortunately. But my family and I, you know, gathered our faith and just prayed and believed that no, he would be healed. And the doctors, again, they told us, you know, it does not look good. Mm. So feeling that discouragement, but also having that faith. Well, months later, it came back saying he is cancer free. And it's so amazing. It's, just, it's amazing. And uh, he's still <laughs> cancer free and healed to this day. And it's just, it's beautiful what prayer can do and what God can do. And sometimes. You don't understand why things happen, especially to your loved ones and to good people. But there's always a hope on the other side and, and, and God's right there with you in your agony and in your pain um, and miracles can happen. And sometimes 
you know, they don't always happen the way we want, but just knowing God is there for you and with you and you're not alone is the most incredible thing. But that's just a piece of my testimony is uh, the power of prayer and what God can do is just, it's miraculous. It's all him. So That's a special moment. (laughs) (laughs) Very special. Thank you for sharing that. That was so much amazing. God, God is, is incredible. He really is. Um, is. (laughs) That's one of my stories. (laughs) Thank you for sharing your favorite story. That it gave me chills as well. <laughs> so many, so many chill moments in here. Uh, mm, yes, so many. So thank you for letting me share that. And I hope that people um, will be inspired by my book and, and hopefully get a lot of uh, hope from it and love, you know, especially those who really need it. You're more than welcome. My final question for you is, is my all-time favorite question that I ask everybody at the end. So you've been able to reach the age of 100 and your friends have decided to put together a film for you of Ali Brook. Oh. Everything you've ever said and everything you've ever done. Then ask me how in the world they got it all. We'll just call it magic. By the Whoa. And they've shown it to you on your 100th birthday. What do you want that film about you to say and to show about your life? Oh my gosh. Wow. That is such like a a beautiful question and a dream. Mm. I would hopefully want it to show, um, man, to show how many people that I've touched and uh, to to inspire other people to, to dream big. I hope that my life could, could, impact people to follow their own dreams and their own heart to have their own faith and kind of just seeing that in front of my eyes and and how um how you kind of like it's like you're having um you have something in your hands like a glow stick or something and you just pass it on to the next person the, that person passes on to the next person it's a it's a chain effect i think that would be so wonderful to see is just how many how many lives I touched whether it's through my song or through film or through an interview or through meeting someone. Uh, that would be the coolest thing to see a compilation of, of all of that. That would be very special to me. <laughs> I love that. That's a great legacy to leave behind. You've touched my life today, Ali, with your story. Where can people find you, Ali, and connect with you and buy your book? Yes, uh, you guys can follow me on social media at Ali Brook. A L L Y B R O O K E. And uh, you can buy my book wherever books are sold. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Uh, you can also get the audiobook where I read to you. <laughs> There's a lot of laughs in there, guys, a lot of smiles, a lot of tears. Just get ready. Um, really, wherever books are sold. Um, I hope you love the book and and just thank you for having me on and and valuing me and my story. It means more than you'll ever know. You're more than welcome. It's really been an honor to have you here today and to unbox your story a little bit for people. Ali, thank you for coming on the Storybox podcast. Uh, Thank you so much. You are just such an awesome, amazing human being. And I really appreciate all the love. So thank you very much. 